Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. The title of today's lesson is <clears throat> Selling Hope to the Hopeless. Hear, O Israel. Once again, today's lesson is entitled Selling Hope to the Hopeless. Hear, O Israel. Now, the children of Israel, we've been scattered to the four corners of the earth. We have been abused, we have been misled, we've been lied to, etc., etc. <clears throat> and we have always been in a state of hopelessness in the midst of the many nations where we dwell. And our enemies, those without and those within, have always approached us selling hope. For it's easy to sell hope to the hopeless. However, we can no longer afford to purchase the hope that they are selling. For it has failed us in all of these nations. It has failed us in generations past, and it will continue to fail us to place hope in our enemies and their systems. Once again, brace yourselves, tighten up your jaws, do not turn to the left or to the right, or you will get hit in the mouth. We are to walk the straight and narrow way of the Most High's commandments. We are not to deviate to the right hand and or to the left. We are to walk the straight and narrow way. Now let's begin this lesson. We will start off here in chapter 17 of Jeremiah. Our people have taken a hold of the falsehood and the systems that are broken. The systems that are lacking righteousness in the midst of these nations. And we continue to hold on to these things and believe in them and believe in the people that have created them. And it continues to fail us and we have not figured this out. Most of us have not. Many of us will die not figuring this out. We will start off here at verse 4 of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4 reads, And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. We are doing that. We have done that. Continue to do it. In the land. It says land here, but lands, plural. We are in the midst of many nations, which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. We have upset the Most High. Thus he has discontinued our heritage. We have been scattered to the four corners of the earth, unaware that we are the children of Israel, unaware that we are a family. Thus, we are fighting each other over silliness because we are unaware that the man that I'm actually in contention with that I'm fighting is actually my own brother. And because I lack this understanding, I find him to be an enemy unto me. Thus, we are always fighting over silliness and pettiness. Verse five, thus saith Yah, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and make it flesh his arm, and whose heart departed from Yah. So many of our men have placed their trust in all these many different systems, i.e. the political system, the judicial system, etc., etc. Their heart have departed from the Most High. They do not walk in his laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. And that has been the problem. When you lack that light, that simply means that you're maneuvering within darkness. And once you're in darkness, you're gonna walk around in circles. You have no idea where you're going. And this has been what we've been experiencing in these many nations. We have placed our trust in men. We have placed our trust in many systems. And we have placed our trust in religion. And we have placed our trust in idols. Verse 6. For he, for he shall be like a heath in the desert. A heath is, in, is an area of land that is arid. That does not grow anything. Does a, that does not see the rain. It's a parched place. <clears throat> and shall not see when good cometh. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness. In a salt land and not inhabited. So that man that will not place his trust in the most high, that man that has placed his trust in all these many systems of falsehoods, 
that man will be like a man in a land that is arid, that is dry, that is not prosperous, that cannot reproduce. It's not where you want to be. Verse 7, blessed is the man that trusteth, that trusteth in Yah and whose hope Yah is. We are to hope in the Most High Yah. We're not to hope in the Democratic Party. We're not to hope in the Republican Party. We're not to hope in the U.S. justice system or anything else in the lands of our captivity. And we are in the many lands, plural, of our enemies. We're not to take stock in the government of Panama, in the government of Venezuela, or any of the, uh, uh, in the government of Brazil, et cetera, et cetera. Any place where we dwell as the children of Israel, we're not to take stock and place our hope in the people that run those governments, nor are we to place stock in the government itself. We are to place our trust and our hope in the Most High Yah, Him and Him alone. Verse 8, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. He will be satisfied and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. So the man that places his trust in Yah. And when you hear me say man, I'm speaking of both men and women. Those that place their trust in the most high will be like a tree planted by the waters. Your trees will be green. Your tree, your, your tree will be fruitful and it will multiply. It will not see drought, will not see the hardships of those that choose to place their trust in anything else or anyone else besides the most high. Yah. So we are to remember that. Verse nine, the heart is deceitfully, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10, I, I search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. So what we are to do, we know clearly that the man, the most high will reward a man based upon his own actions and will punish him based upon his own actions. When you are doing something that's not in accordance to the law, when you are walking contrary to the Most High's Torah, you are punished for it. And it is the Most High punishing you. It is not Satan. When you are walking within accordance of the Most High's law, then you can receive his blessing and his protection. So the Most High does it all. He will punish. He will punish you when you're walking out of line. And he'll reward you as well when you're walking in line with him. You will be blessed. So blessings and cursings are both compliments of the Most High. There is no Satan cursing you anywhere. All right. Now we'll move directly to verse 13. Verse 13 of the same chapter reads, O Yah, the hope of Israel. So if you understand that you are the house of Israel, because all the curses that were placed upon the children of Israel, you can see that clearly upon yourself and upon your family and upon the generations before you throughout your family, throughout your lineage. Then you understand clearly that you are the house of Israel. If you know that you are the house of Israel, then you are to follow the God of Israel and his instructions. And it clearly states here, O oh Yah, the hope of Israel. So our hope is the most high Yah. Our hope is not any political party of any kind anywhere in the lands of our captivity. All that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken Yah, the fountain of living waters. So once again, our hope is to be placed in the most high Yah. We're not to place our hope in the Democratic Party or in anyone else or anything else other than the most high Yah. Verse 17, let's jump directly to that. Be not a terror unto me. Thou art my hope in the day of evil. When evil cometh, it's the most high that has brought it. 
Therefore, those who are walking within his commandments shall be shielded from it. Why? Because it is him who is bringing that evil. It is him who has brought evil upon the children of Israel scattered to the four corners of the earth. No one else. We can turn to no one else for relief for the plight that we suffer in all of these many nations. We are to turn to him who is doing it. And since it's not Satan doing it, we can't turn to Satan to stop it. It is the most high that has brought this evil and terror after us and upon us in these many nations. Therefore, we are to turn to him to stop it. Now, speaking of hope, <clears throat> we seem to want to hope without action. And this is where our people fail. Our hope is to place our trust in the most high Yah. Now, as we do this, to place our trust in him is to believe in his word, but that is simply not good enough. We must also walk within his instruction. In doing so, then we can hope and rest assured that we will be protected and shielded from the evil that surround us and that we may be protected from our enemies who are around about us. Why? Because we are doing an action that affords us that protection. Many of us want to speak of God. Oh, I love the Lord and go lay down with another man's wife. Oh, I love the Lord, but he's stealing. Oh, I love the Lord, but he's a pedophile. Oh, I love the Lord, but he's a closet homosexual, etc., etc. Their mouth is saying one thing and their actions are saying something contrary to what their mouths are saying. And this is the issue with our people. They want to hope, but there is nothing, there's no action being done on their part to guarantee that what they're hoping for can be achieved, can be attained or be received. It's a matter of hoping in hopelessness is where we are. For us to receive the goodness of the Most High, we have to do something in order to get that. We have to walk in his law, statutes, judgments, and precepts. We have to be righteous by which to hope in his protection and to be assured of it. So many of our enemies, those that look like us, our enemies within and the enemies without, they can continue to come towards us with this hope, this and hope that, for they have known from the days of old that we are a hopeless people. And therefore you can always sell hope to the hopeless. But at this present time and in this day and age, we can no longer afford to buy the hope that is being sold to us by our enemies. And when I say our enemies, I'm speaking of those that look like us and those that don't. So if we want to be protected from the terror that is to come, we are to place our hope in the most high that he may shield us from the day of evil. All right, now let's move to Psalms. Psalms chapter 33, we'll read both chapter 33 and chapter 34. These are both short chapters. However, we need to reiterate to the children of Israel, it needs to be clearly understood that we are to place our trust in the most high in nothing else and in no one else. All right, Psalms 33. Verse one reads, rejoice in Yah, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. That is for the upright are those who are walking in the most highest laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. The righteous will rejoice in the most high Yah. Verse two, praise Yah with heart. Sing unto him with psaltery and, in the, and, and an instrument of 10 strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of Yah is right, and all his works are done in truth. If the Most High's works are right, that's short for righteous, and all of his works are done in truth. Truth 
is righteousness. They're one and the same. They're synonymous. When someone tells you that the law is done away with, what they're trying to encourage you to believe is that the most high is done away with. That truth is done away with. That righteousness is done away with. We see here clearly that the word of the most high is right. It's righteous. And I've told you in times past that truth cannot be changed. It's the one thing that remains the same in the earth, whether it be the past, the present, or the future. That is why the Most High has instructed the children of Israel, here, O Israel, I change not. Why? Because the Most High is the ultimate truth. And truth cannot be changed by anyone in the earth. It is the one thing in the earth that is unchangeable, whether it be the past, the present, or the future. That is why he is the most high. Verse five, he loveth righteousness and judgment. All right, righteousness, doing the things that he has commanded. Judgment, punishing those that will do things that's against his law. There's a a silly saying by those who have never understood this word, by those who have heard the foolish ramblings of Christians and have sat in their pews to be poisoned by their nonsense. Don't judge me. You've heard that before. I'm not trying to judge you, etc. Don't be a judge, don't judge, as if judging is something that's bad. Judging and a judgment is nothing but a decision. We make decisions each and every day. There's one thing to judge someone and there's another thing to punish them. I am to judge you. You are to judge me. We are to judge each other based on the accordance of Torah. When someone is not walking within the confines of Torah, then we have to punish them. That is what judgment is. Judgment is nothing but a decision and also punishment. So you are to place judgment. We do it every day. <clears throat> when you met your wife or you met your husband, there were other people from which you had an opportunity to choose from. You made a decision, a judgment based on the character of your spouse against all the others that you may have had a choice from or a choice between. We make judgments every day. You are supposed to judge. <clears throat> You're also supposed to pass judgment at i.e. punishment. Many of us are seeing wickedness and we don't want to say a word about it and we don't want to punish it when it's within our hands to punish it. And the man that turns his face away from punishing wrongdoing, the Most High will turn his face against that man and his entire house. So we are to punish wrongdoing, wrongdoings when we see them. If it's within our might by which to do so, we are at no time supposed to allow a wicked man to go scot-free without punishment. We're not to allow this at no time. And if we are aware of this and we allow it, then the Most High will turn his face against us and our house. And we are to clearly understand that. The earth is full of the goodness of Yah, but the word of Yah were the heavens. By the word of Yah were the heavens made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea together as a heap. He led up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear Yah. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Verse 10. Yah bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the, the devices of the people of none effect. So we have placed our trust in the systems of the heathen. Some of us have placed our trust in the heathen, for they have told us that 
and, and they have shown us and taught us that a European by the name of JC has died on the behalf of everyone. Yet, from the days of our youth, from the stories that we've been told by our elders, from the historical documentation of our own enemies, we can see clearly that these very people have been nothing but our tormentors. They have murdered, slaughtered, and enslaved us and have raped us throughout the many generations in all the different places of the earth. But yet they would bring to us that the counsel from our enemies unto us is that one of them have died on the behalf of our sins. And somehow we have foolishly believed this. The Most High will bring their counsel to naught. It will be of no effect. It will be proven to be lies. It will be proven to be absolute stupidity. So he will certainly take all that they have taught us and embed it in our minds and it will all be of no effect. For the Most High will pour out his spirit upon us <clears throat> And it will be made plain that they have been nothing but liars. And we were misled because our hearts sought to be like other people. Verse 11, the counsel of Yah standeth forever. The counsel of Yah standeth forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. The counsel of Yah, what is that? His laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. When you are given counsel by your lawyer, it is for your own protection. When you're given counsel by the Most High, it is for your own protection. We see clearly here, once again, let me read this for effect. The counsel of Yah standeth forever. In other words, the words of the Most High, his advice, his counsel, his law standeth forever. But yet your enemies will come before you and give you a counsel that is contrary to what we have just finished reading. And we have believed this lie and we have placed our trust in this lie and we have hoped in this lie and it has failed us. Verse 12, blessed is the nation whose God or whose strong one is Yah. All right. Blessed is the nation. What nation whose God is Yah? That is the children of Israel, none other. And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Once again, the children of Israel. We are the people that he has chosen for his own inheritance. And you have even Israelites out here speaking stupidity. God is a woman. We have never read out of the mouth of any of our prophets that God is a woman. We have never read that ever. We have some of our men out here speaking that God is a woman or God is both male and female. We have men in the midst of us that's pushing this rubbish. And some of us are believing this. We have never heard with our ears, nor have we ever read with our eyes in the books of our prophets of our progenitors, of our forefathers, we have never read anywhere where our forefathers have ever said that our God was both male and female, and we've never read anywhere where any of, our, of the most highest prophets have ever said that our God is a female. This is the kind of nonsense that we have grown men, Israelites, presenting to people and some people foolishly believe this nonsense. Now, verse 13. Yah looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. <clears throat> he fashioned their hearts alike. He considereth, considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of a host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. So there's no king being saved by his army and there's no man being delivered by his own power. It's the most high that's going to deliver you. Verse 17. And horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any 
by his great strength. Behold, the eye of Yah is upon them that fear him. In other words, those that walk in his law, that obey his word. Upon them that hope in his mercy. Once again, we are to hope in the most high. These democratic, the democratic party and these other nations where we dwell are always pushing hope to our people. They do not speak to anyone else with hope. They can only come to us, to us with this rubbish because we are once again always in a state of hopelessness. But I am bringing this lesson to remind you that we are to place our hope in Yah and none other. Verse 19, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine to deliver their souls from death. Now, if you're in Christianity and you have been taught their lies and the Most High didn't make it plain that he will make their lies and their falsehood of no effect, their counsel, to deliver their souls from death, that's to keep you from dying. So when the famine comes, the Most High is gonna sustain you. That way you don't die during the famine. That's all this is saying. This is not saying this is gonna make you live forever. No man or woman liveth forever. The most high is the first and he is the last. And you cannot be last with him. Period. Once again, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. So during the famine, when the hard times hit, if our trust is placed in the most high, we can be protected in the time of famine and in the time of war, et cetera, et cetera, if we are walking within the confines of the Most High's law. I will repeat once again, the law is a sanctuary. It's a place where you can find peace. It's a place where you can find rest. You can also call the Most High's law an oasis. It's a place where you can get water in the desert, where there's no water there. It's a place where you can find peace, where you can find rest. But the Most High did make it plain that his law grants peace. And by way of his law, you will be granted rest. There's no other way that I have ever read to where you can be granted peace and or rest other than walking within the confines of this law. All right. <clears throat> Still in 33, so the Most High certainly has stated that he will grant us peace and to those that fear him upon them that hope in his mercy see we're to hope in the mercy of the most high to deliver us from death in the time of famine verse 20 our soul waiteth for yah he is our help and our shield he is our help he is our savior we don't need and never did need anyone by the name of J.C. to save us from anything. The Most High has been delivering his people alone. He has been shielding his people alone. The earth was made by him alone. Verse 21. For our hearts shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Yah, be upon us according as we hope in thee. All right. If you're going to hope in the most high, you better be walking in his laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. Many of you are running around talking this hope mess. Want hope, but don't want to do anything. If you're going to hope in the most high and place your trust in him, you've got to obey his counsel. There is no I hope God saves me and because you said that or feel that, it happens. You have to be doing an act by which to be saved. You have to be doing an act by which to be destroyed. Every man's way will be recompensed in his own bosom. If you're walking in righteousness, you will reap rewards in his protection. If you're walking in wickedness, you will reap trouble and destruction. He will send evil after you. No Satan necessary. Most High does it all. He will bless and he will bust heads. And it's about high time we understand this. All right, let's jump to Psalms 
chapter 34, and we're reading the whole chapter, that the children of Israel be reminded that we're to start placing trust in our enemies, in their systems, in their religion, and in their counsel that is absolutely profitable for nothing. Verse 34, I will bless Yah at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in Yah. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify Yah with me and let us exalt his name together. Verse four, I sought Yah and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. The Most High will cause a wicked man's fear to come upon him. He will take the righteous man and deliver him from his fears. Now, it says here, I saw Yah and he heard me. Most High is not hearing you if you're not walking within his laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. There's no way around that. Verse five, they looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried and Yah heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angels of Yah encamped round about them that fear him and delivered them. The Most High encamped around them that feared him. That's the children of Israel. And delivered them. That's the children of Israel. Verse 8. O oh, taste and see that Yah is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Once again, trusting in the Most High Yah. How do you do that? If I'm an Israelite or I have come to the awakening or the understanding that I am of the house of Israel, then I'm to go into this book and see what Israelites are supposed to do. I'm to find out who is the God of Israel and then I'm to follow his instruction. And we see clearly here that the man that follows the most high's instruction, you got to have some kind of trust in him in order for you to follow this word. So therefore you placing your trust in him is you saying, you know what? I'm going to walk in your law. And if I'm going to walk in your law, then I can hope for your protection. But if I don't walk in your law and I totally disregard it, I can't possibly hope to be protected by you, to be protected by the Most High. So here we see clearly for those that fear him, when you fear him, you obey his commandments. Simply that's what that means. And so we place our trust in him by walking in his law, statutes, judgments, and precepts that we may reap the rewards of his blessings and of his protection. O fear Yah, ye his saints, who are the saints of the Most High. The saints of the Most High are of the children of Israel. Simple as that. For there is no want to them that fear him. Those who walk in the Most High's law, statutes, judgments, and precepts, there isn't a want for anything. Peace is within your house. Peace is within your heart and mind. You can actually lay down and get a good night's sleep. There are many a men running around this earth today, women too, who have all the money that they can possibly need, have all the nicest cars, the biggest houses, take the best vacations, have the fattest bank accounts. And when they lay down to get some sleep, they can't get a good night's sleep. Their mind is troubled. There's no peace within their hearts. There's no peace within their minds. They're worried about this person stealing from them, backstabbing them, etc. There's no trust and there's no peace within their house. There can be no peace in your mind. You cannot have peace of mind. You cannot have peace in your house unless you're walking within the confines of this law. This law grants peace. This law grants a good night's rest. This law protects you from your enemies who are round about you. Once again, we are to turn back onto the law. 
Verse 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek Yah shall not want any good thing. All the good things that you seek, that you desire, the Most High will grant them to you if you're walking within the laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. Come ye children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of Yah, how to walk in the Most High's commandments. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? So which among you love life, have a desire for life and a desire to live many days? In other words, until you're old to fulfill your days that you may see good. And then let me explain this verse. Many of us desire life. We want to live. Many of us want to live many days, an extension of days. The Most High made it plain that the law is light and the law is life and the law extends our days. So walking within the confines of the law, the Most High will extend your days. Most of us seek to see good during our lifetime. There's no need to live to be 90 years old and you have lived a life of nothing but sorrow and misery. That is a heartache unto you. You want to live your life or to desire to have a life that is fulfilled, that has been blessed and with the least amount of turmoil and trouble as possible. Many of our elderly or have lived to be 100, as live, has lived to be 90 something and 80 something and they have nothing but a bunch of horror stories. They have never known peace. They have never walked within the confines of the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. And since they have never known peace and they confuse sour for sweet, sweet for sour, they will tell you during their time, it was the good old days. The good thing is they don't know the difference between good and bad. And this has been the state of confusion that we have been in. So if we seek to have a long life of many days and to see good, we're to walk within the confines of the Most High's law. Keep thy tongue from evil. Keep your mouth from speaking evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. If you're going to seek peace, you're going to seek the law. The eyes of Yah are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. The Most High has got nothing. Does not listen to what a homosexual has to say. I'm going to make that plain to you. The Most High is not listening to what a murderer has to say. The Most High is not listening to what a child molester has to say. And your enemies have given you this counsel that has been false. As if the things that I have just mentioned, you can just all of a sudden just start praying and somehow it goes away and you become blessed. It doesn't work that way. The eyes of Yah are upon the righteous. He will hear their cry. And if you have not placed your trust in him, and if you chose not to walk in his law, statutes, judgments, and precepts, your prayer are an abomination unto him when you don't want to hear anything or do anything pertaining to his law. You can get out. You can pray all you want. He's not hearing your cry. He will hear the cry of the righteous. And his ears are open to their cry. Verse 16. The face of Yah is against them that do evil. The Most High will turn his face against the evil man. The Most High will turn his face against the man that will not dole out righteous judgment. <clears throat> Once again, the face of Yah is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. He's going to kill them. What's the remembrance of you? Your children. Your children. So he will cut you off and cut your children off. He will eliminate your seed from the earth. In other words, you won't live forever. 
for we live forever by way of our posterity, by way of our children. So when he decides to cut you off completely, he's going to uproot you out of the earth, both root and branch. In other words, your lineage, your line will not continue. So if we don't want the Most High to turn his face against us, then what we do is we wash our hands. We withdraw our hands from evil and turn towards his righteousness. Then we will be afforded his protection and we don't have to worry about the Most High turning his face against us and against our house. All right. <clears throat> Verse 17, the righteous cry and Yah heareth and delivereth them and delivereth them out of all their troubles. So don't think for one second that because you are righteous, you're going to be without trouble. Oh, you're going to have trouble. We're still in the lands of our enemies. However, if you're walking within the confines of the most High's law, he will see you through your troubles. Verse 18, Yah is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save the such as be of a contrite spirit. You always hear me speak to those of a contrite spirit, a remorseful spirit, those who have recognized that they have done violence to the Most High's law, whether it be present or in times past. And because of that contrite spirit, you have changed your ways. Now, your ways cannot be changed unless you first change your thinking. So once you realize that you are in the house of Israel and you go into the book, into the scrolls, and you read exactly what our conduct is supposed to be as the people of God, now your mind changes. You don't revert back to your actions from days of old, your violent ways, your vile ways, your unrighteous ways. Now that you have a change of thinking, that's going to ultimately change the way you behave. And so the Most High will save such as be of a contrite spirit, a humble individual, someone who is remorseful, who is sorrowful for what they have done, i.e. wickedness in times past. Verse 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Once again, the righteous man doesn't get to walk through without being bothered. He's going to have his ups and downs, but the most high is going to see him through. Many of you are thinking that if you turn to the law, all your problems goes away. It doesn't. But the Most High will see you through it and he will strengthen you during your time of trouble and will shield and protect you. And that's the difference. If you live to be 100, you will live to be 100 and you'll have days of blessings and you will have happy, good times. If you live to be 100 and you are a wicked man, I mean, you've lived a life of a living hell, literally. Your life has been troubled. But then the man that is of a righteous, of a contrite spirit, that is a righteous man, if he lived to be a hundred, is not going to be a, a hundred years of being accursed. It's going to be a hundred years of blessings. He will be able to recount good times, so to speak. Okay. All right. So the most out, let's go back to verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but Yah delivereth him out of them all. So the most high will deliver the righteous out of all of his afflictions. He keepeth all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. So, you know good and well, when a man starts speaking of righteousness, when a man starts speaking of the laws of God, the laws of Yah, the unrighteous can't stand it. They hate him that rebuke it in the gate. Some of you have turned to the Most High's law, statutes, judgments, and precepts. You have come to the understanding that you are the children of Israel. But then you take this information 
to your mom. You take this information to your dad. You take this information to your brother, your sister, your cousin, your uncle, et cetera, et cetera. And if you are one of us, one of our people, an Israelite, one of those members, one of those family members that I have just mentioned is a pastor, is a deacon, is a reverend, or something like that in one of these idol houses. And when you speak of the most highest laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts, they can't stand it. They hate the righteous because they're wicked. And they don't want to see you coming because if they do something that's unrighteous, they know you're going to say something about it. If they're going to sit at the table and eat a ham hock or eat a, or, or eat a uh, you know, a piece of bacon or something like that, you being a righteous man, they know you're going to mention that that is forbidden. They know you're going to mention that. So they'd rather go off in a corner and sit down and eat it where you can't see because they can't stand being corrected. And in their heart, they know that's, that it, what they're doing is incorrect. And that's why they will hide their faces from you. Yeah, cousin such and such, he walks in the law. I know if I go over here with his, with his pork chop and eat it, I know he's going to say something about it. Man, I don't want to hear his voice. I'm going to go upstairs and eat it. I'm going to go outside and eat it. So they're hiding their faces from you because they don't want that rebuke. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. Can't stand you because they know you're going to correct them. And that's what a righteous person is supposed to do when you see a man doing something that's that can get him harm to kill him. And that is totally against the most highest law, statutes, judgments, and precepts. So once again, verse 21, evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Verse 22, Yah redeemeth the soul of his servants. If you're going to serve the most high, you are walking in his law, statutes, judgments, and precepts. There is no such thing as a servant of the most high that does not walk in his law. There's no such thing as a servant of the most high, the God of Israel that states that God's laws are done away with. There is no servant of the Most High saying such stupidity. And none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. In other words, place your trust in the Most High by walking in his laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts. And if you're to do that, you will not be desolate. You will not be empty. You will not be lacking. You will not be wanting. You will not be failing. And that concludes Psalms. Chapter 34. Let's move over to Isaiah chapter 30. Mm. Isaiah chapter 30. And we will read verse 9 through 12. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 9 through, through 12. This is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of Yah. We are in this predicament. Once again, this is verse nine. We are in this predicament because we don't want to hear the law. And it was stated clearly that those of us that will not hear the law, even our prayer shall be an abomination, meaning it will not be heard. The Most High will hear the cry of the righteous, the law abiding. He will not hear the cry of the wicked. Period. I don't care what counsel your enemies have given you. Verse 10, which say to the seers, the seers are nothing but prophets from the days of old. See not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceit. Our people have gotten so foul that we don't want to hear anything that pertains to the truth. We would rather have you lie to us, give us falsehoods, give us fantasies, rather than deal with the reality of the matter. This is what happens when you have taken a people and you have destroyed them and you've caused them to hope in lies. You've caused them to place their trust in falsehoods. 
When you do that to a people, then all of a sudden, anything that has any bit of truth in it is somewhat offensive to them. It's unbelievable to them, unfathomable. Hey, I can't believe that. But if you tell this person a big old lie, somehow that's comforting unto them, that is pleasing unto them, and it's much more believable to them. So we are a group of people living in a fantasy world. And we are afraid to deal with the reality of our circumstance. So therefore, we're going to tell the prophets, man, stop, stop talking about I need to walk in this law. Stop telling me I can't lay down with the next man's wife. Stop telling me I can't lay down. I can't have two women lay down in the same bed for my pleasure. Stop telling me I can't lay down with these children. Stop telling me I can't steal this money. Stop telling me I've got to keep the Sabbath day, et cetera, et cetera. I don't want to hear that. Tell me something that's much more pleasing to my ears. Because if I'm to hear all the things that you're telling me that's right, and I know I'm living wrong, then I'm forced to make a decision to change. There are many people that don't want you to tell them what this law states. Man, I don't want to know. Why don't they want to know? Because if they know, then they've got to change. And the Most High is going to eat at you. You're not going to be told what the truth is and then forget it. it doesn't happen. Most High lives forever. His word endureth forever. So when you hear that truth, there's no you're raising that out of your head. It will nag at you till the day you die, especially if you are walking in total opposition to it. Verse 11, <clears throat> we're reading through 12. Verse 11, get ye out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. When we decide to walk contrary to the Most High's law, statutes, judgments, and precepts, two cannot walk together lest they be agreed. So the minute we decide we're going to walk in, in wickedness or be a party to wickedness, then the Most High departs from us right there, right then. And so therefore, we don't want to do that. We don't want to turn aside. We don't want to turn aside from the way that is right. We want to continue to walk in the way that is right. And if we're not already walking in the path to dwelling, we are to seek after it. Verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel. Doesn't say anything about the Holy Two or the Holy Three, or the Holy Three, i.e. Trinity. It's the Holy One of Israel. The Holy One, not the Holy Trinity, not the Holy Three or Two or anything of the sort. Because he despised this word, the house of Israel absolutely hated it. And trust in oppression. Once again, we have placed our trust in falsehoods. All these nations in which we dwell, the people that run them have been our oppressors. They have enslaved us. They have murdered us. They have raped us. They have killed our elderly and they have killed our youth. There is no assurance of our life in the midst of these nations. We are to understand that. There is no care between them killing one of our women, one of our elderly or one of our children. They can care less. So we have hated the Most High's word, we despised the word, and we trusted in oppression. The government of these nations are oppressive governments, and we have placed our trust in this oppression, and we have placed our trust in their perverseness, their wickedness, and we stay thereon. Meaning, anyone with some common sense can agree that the government of the United States, of Spain, of Portugal, of France, of Germany, of the Netherlands, of Italy, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all your slave nations. Another word for the slave nations would be the Christian nations. All these Christian nations 
are the very people that have murdered and slaughtered our people and enslaved them all throughout the earth. Let that be a reminder to any person that's a Christian that looks like me. The people you serve and the people you try to make yourself adjoin to or cause yourself to join with are the very people that have murdered and slaughtered your people and have no respect for you. And while you're praying for them, they're plotting to kill you and your children. And you are to understand that some way, somehow. Once again, verse 12. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word, you hate walking within the confines of law. You want to be lawless. And you trust in oppression. You don't mind getting busted over the head and being at the bottom of the barrel and being enslaved and being murdered and being lied to. You trust in oppression and perverseness. You like wickedness. And you don't mind staying in a place where evil doers dwell. You like it. You want to stay in this thing. Remember, we were shipped to the midst of these people because we wanted to be like them. The Most High gave us righteousness. That's his law. That's what he gave to us. Did not give it to the other nations of the earth. Did not give it to the other families. When you hear nation and you hear family, same thing. The righteousness of the Most High, his law, statutes, judgments, and precepts were given to but one family and that's the children of Israel. It was not given to anyone else. That law is righteousness. That law is truth. But we didn't want that. So what did we do? We balled it up, chucked it behind our back, and said, no, we want to be like those other people over there that's doing all manner of wickedness. We don't want to walk in no law. Okay, so the Most High said, well, you want to disregard my law. You want to be like these other people. Let me deliver you into the hands of your enemies. Because if you're supposed to be righteous, anyone else, if righteousness was only given to you, that means everyone else is wicked. And so we chose wickedness. We chose to be like wicked people. And thus we were delivered into the hands of the wicked who are our enemies. So here we are. We are the righteous people of the earth. We're supposed to be. But we are dwelling in the midst of the unrighteous. And many of us would have it so and would not want any of this to change. But there is a small contingent of us that are disgusted for the things that we see and hear each and every day in the lands of these vile people. So it is to be clearly understood that many of us in these lands actually like this oppression. Many of us in these lands would rather be in this position than be in any other place. And some of us can't even fathom what it would be like to live in absolute peace. Many of us can't even fathom what it would be like for us to be ruling in righteousness. Can't begin to imagine that. In fact, many of our elderly have been so destroyed, they have lost the will to fight. Their whole mindset is, Man, we can't change this. We're done. There's no, there's no winning this. We are done. How are we going to change all of this? There's no way. We're too far gone. So now the state of hopelessness is being reinforced. That is the beauty of youth. The older man has been beaten. The older man has been broken. His will to fight is no more. But the young Israelite will stand up like a roaring lion and will turn to righteousness and will not 
accept that there is no hope and will not accept that we are done. For the minute you decide to think that we are done and there is no hope for us, you have ultimately admitted defeat and will no longer continue to fight. In other words, there is a man who's willing to lay down and die. And we're not to have such a spirit upon us. As we turn to the Most High's law, statute, judgment, precepts, he will strengthen us against our enemies. Therefore, this spirit of abandonment, this spirit of, of this is too overwhelming for us, the spirit of we can't possibly overcome this, the spirit of our enemies are too strong for us to overcome, etc., etc. We are to remember that the Most High is the spirit of all living. And if we turn to him, he will cause us to beat our enemies, regardless of how many guns they have and regardless of how big their armies are. Let's turn to Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. Move back one chapter. We'll read verse 13 and verse 15. And verse 13 of Isaiah chapter 29 reads, Wherefore, Yah said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precepts of men. What men? Our enemies. Our fear towards the Most High has been distorted. If we're going to fear the Most High, we're going to walk in His law, statutes, judgments, and precepts. Somehow our enemies have taught us that we're to fear, we're to fear JC. And somehow there is no law. And we have bought that foolishness. Verse 14. Therefore, behold... I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people. This people who? The children of Israel. <clears throat> For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. So the Most High said he will do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. So the marvelous work that the Most High would do is he's going to take a bunch of people that are supposed to be holy, that are supposed to be full of wisdom, and that are supposed to be full of his Holy Spirit, and he's going to make them a bunch of dummies. He's going to remove their knowledge. He was going to remove their understanding, and he was going to cause these people to be conquered. And all of a sudden, the wise men are somehow, all of a sudden, they're a bunch of dummies. And everyone is wondering, now how could these people, who are God's people, that are supposed to be the head family of all the earth, how are they at the very bottom of the barrel? And that's the marvelous thing that the Most High has done. It would have been one thing if our enemies had captured us and taken us to one, one nation. But they have subdued us and taken us all over the earth, as the prophecy so states. And we are by far the best combatants the earth has ever seen. Yet we have no will to fight against our enemies who are not even close to the combatants that we are. Our spirit, are, our spirit is strengthened, strengthened to fight in the midst of each other and our spirits are weakened when it comes to fighting against our enemies now that's amazing that's the most high placing a fire in the midst of the children of Israel that we don't have a problem fighting our brother but come time to fight our enemies all of a sudden our hearts are weakened and that's a problem verse 15 Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from Yah, and their works are in the dark. If your works are in the dark, they're evil. <clears throat> and they say, who seeth us and who knoweth us? So the evil man seeks to do his wickedness in the dark, thinking that no one is able to see him, all the while forgetting that the most high fills both heaven and earth. And there's nothing that you can do and there's nothing that you can think of that he is unaware of. 
The evil man forgets all of these things. So, we see clearly that the Most High has removed the wisdom from the, from the children of Israel, has removed the, the, will, the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of the prudent men. So he has made his dummies. This is why these, this Democratic Party and all the systems of these other nations can come before us with the same falsehood and cause us to believe in it. And each and every time it fails us because we're dumb. You can tell a dummy the same thing a thousand times and it could be wrong and that dummy is going to believe you the thousand and one time. He doesn't have the knowledge to contend with what's being said. But as the Most High increases our knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of Him, because we have turned on to His law, statutes, judgments, and precepts, our enemies, both the enemies within and the enemies without, will not be able to stand before us because the things that they say and do, we can bring their evil and their wickedness before their faces and they will not be able to stand before us. Much of this is taking place right now. That's why you haven't seen any pastors showing up with a microphone saying anything, have you? He can't. They'll run him out of town. Our knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of who we are has been increased. Our knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of who the Most High is has been increased. Our knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of who our enemies are has been increased. And because of this, the pork chop preacher can't come before the people and say anything. And if he did, they're going to run him out of town because now we are armed with the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding to where we can no longer be fooled. The fatness from our hearts has been removed. The blindness from our eyes have been removed. The stoppers in our ears have been removed. So therefore now we can contend with what's being said and we can do what we have not been able to do in times past. Clearly recognize our enemies, especially our enemies within. Not only are we able to recognize them, we're going to start doing something that we have not seen. We have not done. We will start punishing our enemies for their treason. So these are some of the things that we are to look forward to, that we may not be fooled by these strangers and these enemies of ours. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 17. Deuteronomy chapter 17. As we are looking towards many of our men are looking to vote for their enemies and trying to put their enemies above them. Now, we have been voting for quite some time, and as we continue to do so, nothing has been delivered to the children of Israel. The Most High has made it clear that none of this will work. We are to turn back onto him. He will deliver us out of the many nations where he has scattered us, and he will place us back into the land of our forefathers, and we will serve him, and the law of the land will be his law. Somehow we don't believe that. We think that in the many lands of our captivity that we really belong here and that we belong at the bottom of the barrel and we have placed our trust in our enemies and we have placed our trust in the system that's been devised by our enemies and maintained by our enemies with the help of some of our own people who are our enemies within. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 15 reads. Verse Deuteronomy 17, verse 15. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom Yah thy strength shall choose. One from among thy brethren shall thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not. Once again, thou mayest not. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. Children of Israel, men of Israel, you are to clearly understand you are not to appoint anyone 
that is not of your own people to lead you. Let me say that again. There are many of our men out here speaking of uh, the, the, the new black MAGA. I'm hearing all of this nonsense. And there are black men that's, that's trying to vote for Donald Trump. Some people are con have contention. He's a racist. They're all racist. Every last one of them. What U.S. president has not been a racist? They all are. <clears throat> That's not to be confused. We are not to ever place our trust in any of our enemies, first of all. We're not to place our trust in anyone or anything but the Most High. But the Most High made it plain that we should never, ever appoint a stranger that is not of our brother, meaning that's not of one of our tribes to ever lead us. So anyone that's speaking, as you look at these MAGA, these MAGA brothers, they do not understand this. Some of them do not care to understand this. And once again, they're going to the well with a bucket with a hole in it. Their actions will not profit them. We are not to appoint a stranger to lead us in any capacity, period. And if we were to appoint someone that is of our people and they are not walking in the law, statutes, judgments, and precepts, they will fail us all the same. These are things that we are to be mindful of. We have become used to this oppression. We have been, become used to the abuse. <clears throat> We have not known peace in these lands. The Most High made it plain. There will be no rest for the soles of our feet. All right? Our minds will not be at ease in these lands. Neither will our feet. No place for our feet to rest. They will be moving us from place to place. Any place that you desire, they're going to come and take it. You may live there for a little while. Five years down the road, 20 years down the road, 30 years down the road, they're going to run you up out of there. These are facts. These can be validated based on the most highest word from the prophets to our people in times past. And anyone that's li living in this diaspora knows this to be true. Wherever our people have taken root in the many lands of our captivity, it's just a matter of time before they run us, they run us up out of there, move us to someplace else. And when we get there, they're going to move us from there too. We're being moved to and fro in the midst of these nations. There's no rest for the soles of our feet. These are facts. Some may call it gentrification. You may call it something else. However, wherever you are, don't become too comfortable. For the Most High is going to ensure that your enemies uproot you out of wherever it is that you are. There are many sellouts that's telling us how great things are and how far we have come. And that we are to place our hope in the ballot box. And we are to remember that we are to place our hope, our trust in the Most High Yah. Our votes have not delivered us out of the hands of the evil man. It has not. It has not delivered us from being at the bottom of the barrel, nor will it ever. In these many nations, we are dealing with a wicked system created and devised and maintained by wicked people. <clears throat> Somehow we're crazy enough to think that <clears throat> we were we understand clearly we were delivered into the hands of the wicked. We're delivered into the hands of those who know not truth, who know not righteousness. Somehow, here we are in the midst of the unrighteous, in the midst of the unjust, and we are asking for righteousness from unrighteous people, and we're looking for justice from some unjust people. This is the level of ignorance that's in the midst of the children of Israel. And this ignorance is running rapid because we have no idea who we are and we have no idea who our enemies are. But the minute that we turn back onto the Torah and the Most High increase our knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, 
we then understand clearly who the most high is. We understand clearly who we are. And we know exactly what our role is in the earth. Then it's very clear for us to understand why all these things have happened to us. And then we can clearly identify who our enemies are. And if you know who your enemies are, you will deal with these people entirely different once you are aware of your surroundings. Many of our men are maneuvering in a war zone, drunk and high. For they don't understand that this is a war zone. These are the things that we have to teach them. For they do not know. We are in the midst of the wicked. All you see is wickedness. Now what every man is being given, every man now is being given a chance to make a decision. Will you stay there on in this wickedness? Or can you recognize this wickedness to be that and withdraw your hands and turn wholeheartedly to the most highest righteousness? Everyone is being given that opportunity. That way when the evil comes, if you're standing on the wrong side of the train tracks, you're going to be dealt with. You're going to be killed. You're going to endure extreme hardship that will ultimately lead to your death. However, if you have taken a hold of the Most High's righteousness, then you have stepped into the sanctuary of the Most High. You will find peace in a time of unrest. You will have water in a time of drought. You will have food in a time of famine. So we are to determine exactly right now, are we willing to live or are we willing to die? And the righteous man will choose life that he may live. Now, when you hear me say he may live, that his seed may be prolonged upon the earth. The wicked man will have his seed removed from the face of the earth. So if you're tired of going in the wrong direction, if you're tired of wickedness, then simply withdraw your hands. The wickedness of this nation and others are being uncovered. We are given the opportunity to choose between righteousness and wickedness. A tenth will choose righteousness. So the other tenth will not. And there's nothing that you and I can do about it. They have simply chose to be chosen to be destroyed. There are many that are upon the face of the earth that has been created specifically for destruction. The Most High creates the waster, that's the destroyer, that he may destroy. And when he's done destroying, then the Most High destroys him. Place your trust in Yah and not in any oppressive system that have been created and maintained and maintained by wicked people that have murdered, slaughtered, raped, and enslaved our people. And those that have done this to our people absolutely refuse to pay. They refuse to give us any compensation for it. And they are supposed to be this way. For the Most High said clearly that he is our great reward. We are to turn to him in order for us to be restored. None restoreth but the Most High. So these wicked people are going to double down on their wickedness and they will not make us whole. They are not capable of doing that. However, the Most High will deal with them in a manner that they have dealt with us. So the day of evil is coming and there's nothing that they can do to stop it. Many of them are already seeing this change for this change is taking place. Why? Because the children of Israel have turned towards the Most High with their whole heart and their whole soul. And we're seeking after the Most High and his righteousness. And as we seek righteousness, then we'll get everything else that we so desire. And we're to be mindful of that. All right, Israel, that concludes this lesson. Selling hope to the hopeless. Our people have been in this state of hopelessness for quite some time. In a stupor for quite some time. Let me also remind you of this. 
as we deal with these politicians being placed before us that's coming for a vote. They want our vote, but at the same time, they don't want to do anything for it. That's similar to those of the children of Israel who speak of God and want God's protection, but they will not walk in the ways of God. It doesn't work that way. As for the children of Israel, we are to be mindful of our enemies, our enemies in times past and our enemies that are present. We have a bad habit of making our enemies our leaders. I've done a lesson a very long time ago entitled When Our Enemies Become Our Leaders. Stop taking your enemies and putting them to lead you. We have men that's been pimps, that's been drug dealers. Some of them have been murderers. They may not have personally murdered somebody, but they have orchestrated, paid for, and given commands to have other of our people killed. So we have murderers, killers, liars and thieves, and drug dealers, and just a bunch of convicts that has been enemies unto us in times past. And that includes some of these rappers who have brought all the degeneracy before the people and has caused our name and image to stink in the midst of the nations. And all of a sudden, these enemies of ours that have done the things that I've mentioned, all of a sudden, they get a bit older after they have victimized us. And all of a sudden, they want to victimize us some more. Now they want to advocate and pretend to be one of our leaders. When it, in the time when they had the most power and they had the most influence by which to present a positive image of our people, they chose not to. And now that they're older, they want to come before us and act as though they are an advocate for the very people that they have abused the very people that they sold drugs to, the very people that they pimped out our daughters, the very people that have caused our young sons to go to jail, the very people that have caused our young sons to kill each other and have caused our elderly to walk in fear. These same men now come before us seeking to be our leaders, seeking to be our spokesperson. And we foolishly allow these degenerates to be our leaders and our spokesperson. Well, those days are coming to an end. Why? Because now we're going to take your wickedness and put it before your face. And you will not be allowed to lead us in any capacity. For you have been an enemy unto us in times past, and you're still an enemy unto us today. You're doing our collective enemies bidding. You have never been an advocate for your people. You've done all the things destructive towards your own people and you are compensated by our enemies by which to do this. You are a traitor. And many of these rappers wear that traitor hat. These are traitors unto our people, pastors included. So we are to be mindful of allowing these men who have shown themselves and have a track record of doing things harmful to our people, of presenting our image in such a way that's that it has, it has caused our image to stink in the midst of ourselves and in the midst of the entire earth, that these men would dare come before us and now seek to speak as if they represent us when they have been nothing but our enemies and we have been nothing but their victims by which they've made a dollar. It's despicable and now when they come before us, we're gonna shut them down. It's amazing. Take a man's wickedness and put, his, put it before his face. Put his evil before him and he wants to run the other way. So we're to be mindful that we are not to allow enemies to become our leaders and our spokesperson in any capacity. Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. It may have been five, possibly six weeks since I've done a video. It's been the longest break I've ever taken as far as as far as presenting videos, I've been looking at the current situation, the political situation here in America, as well as 
the geopolitical situation that's going on both in Ukraine as well as what's taking place in the Holy Land. Troublous times are ahead, more so than we've ever seen before. Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and in my house, we will choose to serve the Most High Yah, the God of Israel, and to walk in his law, statutes, judgments, and precepts that we may be afforded his protection. And I certainly trust and hope that you and your house will do the same. For whatever a man may believe and think, that doesn't make it true. However, what will happen is whomever it is that you have placed your trust in and whatever it is in which you believe and whomever you deem to be God, the days are coming when you will have to call on that person, that entity, whatever it is you believe in, you're going to have a chance to call on him, her, it to see if that actually works. And what you don't want is in your time of distress to be calling on falsehood. So do your research, do your reading, do your studying that when you decide to place your trust in whatever it is you're going to place your trust in, be sure that it's something that will actually work, that will be uplifting to you, that will be beneficial to you, that will be empowering to you, and that will protect you. Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy laws of truth. And peace to the stranger that will take a hold of the Most High's laws, statutes, judgments, and precepts and do them. The stranger is not to be forgotten in all of this. I stress that after each and every video, there are many of the people, many of our people who have a hate for our enemies. I understand that. And they personally feel as though our enemies can't be saved. They're all going to get killed. They're so wicked, etc., etc. I get it. However, the prophets don't state that. The prophet states that if you are of a contrite spirit, even those of the nations, there's a place for them in the land that turn with their whole heart and their whole soul. And so I'm going with that. Once again, peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. Do not allow anyone to sell you hope. You let them know that first of all, you're not buying it. And most importantly, your hope and your trust is placed in the most high Yah, him and him alone. And there's no hoping for something without some work being done. You cannot hope for the most highest protection but you don't want to follow his law, statutes, judgments, and precepts. Those two don't go together. Once again, peace and y'all bless. And there's Labor Day coming up here on Monday. So chances are I will do another video addressing some of the current situations that I'm seeing within the earth. Peace and y'all bless.